really played hard. Uh, their kid Tony really had an unbelievable game, and uh, uh, yeah, they were very athletic, strong, and in that like 11 to four minute mark in the second half, it looked like we were we were tired there, uh, and you know we weren't as aggressive and. There's a lot of game pressure on our kids. And then in the last four minutes, they were magnificent, which says a lot about the character of our guys. And, uh, but, uh, you know, Vernon, we got him the ball, and he, you know, he responded. And we, he actually got 17 shots, which it's been tough to get him shots, but stuff that he's been working on and we've been working on uh, paid off in that week. Uh, the leadership of Trey, the, uh, Jack coming off and playing not only the second big, but on the perimeter to give us some Cassius in foul trouble. Their perimeter became more athletic and more physical. And uh, we haven't had a lineup with Jack, Matt, and Vernon in very much, but that lineup helped us in the first half. So just try to keep doing different things and, and uh, using Trey as our leader. And, uh, uh, you know, just really proud of my guys. I, I would hope that Jeff is proud of his guys. That, that was a, a really good basketball game. And what happened when they scored within three and you guys said they got a new burst? Well, we get, you know, our defense wasn't very, and, and we just stopped being strong like we were hoping shots would go in. For sometimes when you get tired, you know, you're not, I don't know, it's just, it's that ebb and flow, you know, like uh, it's what, what makes human beings human beings. You know, sometimes the other guy's just better. And then you hope that at a timeout, at a timeout we called a, thing, a little punch action and we executed, got it to Vernon, and then we executed. I think we had a, an 11 to 2 run. We really executed well. And, um, but that's just going to happen. The other teams aren't going to lie down and die. And thank goodness we did not in those last four minutes. What did you guys do to get them out of their TV zone? And how did you think you guys handled that? No, no. I don't know if we did something special. They, they, their main defense is man. They had some success with the 2-3 zone. We then had a little bit of success against it. So I think at the end of the day, for you know, Jeff knows that for his team to win, they, they play man. and. They did. They played it well, and uh, you know it's not like anyone just beat the other team. We won, but they played well. They played very well. Coach, what, what were you trying to communicate to the students? Yeah, you know I don't know if I made a mistake on that, but I've never heard another coach's name yelled out in the middle of the first half when we're in a war with the team. You know, like I, you know, so I don't know if they were saying come sit with me or. That's what it means. Okay, but you know, okay. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. We got a different look at what the hell's going on on the game. I, I thought it was something personal because I've never heard. I apologize to the students for that. I don't apologize for the timing. Like, you, you shouldn't say that. In the middle of the first half in an ACC game, this isn't some cutesy little thing where, you know, we can just bounce a, a ball around and, you know, giggle. You know, we got we to gotta fight. We got to have people who are adamant about, uh, about it. So uh, once I heard his name, again, I'm not going to go say, will you please tell me exactly what you're doing? So it's a mistake on my part. But I'd rather make the mistake in protection of my, my guy. And then I went just at the end of the half, and said, look, he's our guy. You know, he's our guy. And and if any you know, that's it. So I apologize for the you know but, but you know, let's think of a different cheer. Let's put it like defense. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> Come on, Duke. You know, let's go, Duke. Come on. You know, leave the other guy alone. And uh, so look I love Jeff. So.
Can Hope the ACC doesn't find me like they did Bray. <laughs> can, can, you tell so, about the can we get fined for this? <laughs> Will Vince find me? Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> Text him tonight, please don't. Don't let him find me. Yeah. Right. Will any yeah. students have to run laps? I'm sorry. Any students have to run laps? No, no. I, I love our students. It just let's let's move on. Let's talk about the game. All right. But I apologize for that. Mm. And Jeff can sit with me any time, but not during a game. <laughs> can you talk about the right. and, and what that, huh? that meant to you tonight and, and what he meant to you? No, no, I love mean, <laughs> Jeff. Jeff's my son, man. I mean, he, these guys, we're part of a brotherhood. You know, the playing against him is very difficult. You know, I, I don't like it. And is that what you asked? I'm, I'm sorry, Kobe. In, in oh, I'm sorry. I thought you saw Jeff. Tonight, tonight, what he meant to you, what this meant to you to... No, it, it's the last couple days have been really emotional, you know. Uh, look, Kobe was one of my players. I coached him on three teams. He was my leader. We had special moments, private and public. You know, I, he was amazing with my grandkids. The, the grandson on, this, on our team, is, his nickname's Mamba because he met him in uh, Beijing, and he would go to my granddaughters and hi, princess, and kiss their hand, and, you know, we have a picture of my grandson, Quinn, with Kobe with a gold medal, and Gigi, as he, all together. We, we've been, my wife and my daughters have been sharing pictures. We, you know, uh, Mickey had an unbelievable relationship with Kobe. Uh, you know, so, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, it was, it's been bad, you know, it's, it's been bad, and, uh, uh, and I have been very emotional about it, not publicly, but, and for the other people involved, too, are you kidding me? Nine people, horrific, so, so very tragic. And Kobe was the key guy in building the continuity of culture for those 11 years that I coached, his, and his relationship with LeBron was the key, was the key. Those two guys were magnificent together. That's why I'm sure LeBron's gone through a lot, uh, quite a bit. And they were, they were the foundation, and everything else was built on the relationship that those two guys developed. And they allowed me to help in that a little bit, but also then to coach it. And uh, look, th those are moments in time. <coughs> those moments don't happen for everybody. It's um, those five champions, those two Olympics, those are moments in time. And uh, all those guys involved and the coaches and the families uh, recognize that. Mike, how do you console somebody like Cassius, who's a California kid, who said that Kobe, you talked to Kobe actually about yeah. coming here and everything and how rough he took well, we had a big meeting in my office before practice yesterday. And uh, so we tried to comfort them, and I wanted them to comfort me. I wanted them to know. And we showed pictures of the teams. Uh, I explained some stories so that they could understand the depth of it. And also, they saw me crying. And, and talk to them about, look, adults cry, men cry, it, it, you know, and I just want you to know how much this meant. So, and I said, I know it means a lot to you because you idolize him and you look up to him. So we had a really good session in my office and just the, the team coaches and myself. And, uh, and then we had the ideas, Nolan, about the shirts and, uh, the moment of silence, and and, and again, we uh, have the moment of silence for uh, Gene, who's, you know, in intercollegiate athletics, he's, if he ain't on R Mount Rushmore, you know, I don't know who else is, but he, he you know, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of death, you know, and, you know, like for kids, how do you, that's even more difficult to handle. But, uh, you know. and anyway, uh, he's good. 
he, he's good. But you know, we tried to do our best in, in talking about it. Anything else for Coach? Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you.